Pedro Rivera is the superintendent of the school district of Lancaster, our county's largest. We were fortunate to grab him in 2008 from his meteoric rise by the age of 35 through the teaching and administration in his native Philadelphia schools. Serving on numerous state and regional boards, Pedro's passion is successful urban education, from aggressive pre-K and professional development to college and career prep for many whose home circumstances require unique approaches and support. With over 50 languages represented in the district and a highly mobile and homeless cohort, his challenges fit his passion. Quick good story, his high school, McCassie, is a magnet for sports and other media coverage. And district championships are a big thing this time of year throughout southern Pennsylvania. Well, McCaskey's little-known uh, 2013 state runner-up mock trial team of brainy, articulate students just won districts. But even more remarkable is the runner-up team. They had to get to beat them. They had to beat to get there. McCaskey's mock trial junior varsity. <laughs> Nice going, Pedro. Pedro is it. This is my school. 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 Hey, squeeze it on your paper. This is our school where we play and learn together. You did it! No matter what happens in the world around me, I know here is safe. My family and I are part of a community. Even though I'm little, I'm learning skills that will help me when I'm an adult. I'm making pancakes. Oh, that's your favorite. I'm, I'm making pancakes. Oh. People depend on me, and I'm learning to depend on other people. Debbie, could you put this in there for me? Thank you. We all work together to make our classroom work. Be helpful, be helpful. And be respectful. And be respectful. Go! I'm learning to control my emotions instead of acting in ways that could hurt others or me. School back. No, I'm more here. Okay, turn around and talk. What should you all do? How should you solve this? My teachers help me see that what I do has consequences so I'll be more likely to use my words to solve conflicts. Do you all still want to play? I want to play with that one. Gabby, do you hear his words? Yes. My teachers help me think in new ways. Who had more? Which yes. shapes had more? This one. If there was a zero up there. It... They help me stick it out to find the answer even when it's hard. No, you wouldn't put it in. Did they cry? Goodness, no. I found it now how much fun learning can be. Rock and roll, baby. <laughs> Not everyone makes me feel like what I say matters. But here, people listen to me and make me feel important. Oh, what does it taste like? It's tea. It's tea? Oh, it's tea. Ooh, what flavor of tea is that? Red. Red tea. Mm. I have big dreams. And at school, I'm learning how I can make them come true. Because I got to come to this school, I'll grow up to be. The one teachers love to have in their classroom. Father, my teacher's drop in the water. The one you know won't ever give up. The first in my family to go to college. Is that The person who makes smart choices. Thank you. The person who always dreams up the big ideas. I'll be the one you can count on to say, don't worry, I got this. 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 Yes. No word, we did it! So I love... <laughs> so that's a video you can find that's really an inspirational video that you can find on YouTube. I mean, it's just phenomenal. But I love that part. I always say, I love red tea.
So I don't know what Brett T is, but we're going to figure that out um, at some point for that young man. If it doesn't exist, I'm sure he'll make it up. So I get to go, I guess, last um, in terms of the speaker. So I'm going to work really hard to keep everyone motivated and just leaving here with a sense of mission, not only around technology, but really around focus on kids. I mean, I think it's important, which there's videos here, there is no better feeling than the face of a smiling child. And when you think about everything that was discussed today and all we do, at the end of the day, isn't that what our job is? Both not only as educators, but as a community to raise healthy children, to raise a healthy community, to improve the quality of life for all those around us. I have the distinct honor to represent the School District of Lancaster and just to kind of share um, a few quick facts to understand our perspective on this. It's best to kind of know who we are. So very quickly, if you indulge me, and the School District of Lancaster serves around 11,500 students. We serve around 11,000, over 11,000 students throughout the course of the year. We're 58,000, we're 58% Latino, 8% Asian, Pacific Islander, 19% African American, 15% Caucasian. We're 83%, 83% of our students or families qualify for free reduced lunch. 17% of our students qualify uh, fall within that paid lunch tax. Our students are very diverse. We're about 4% refugee students, 3% migrant students, immigrant students. So 7% of our students move in to the country, many of which never having had any formal schooling. We're 18%, as Brenda, Brenda shared, we're 18% English language learners, interestingly enough. 51% of those students move into our district already having an IEP. So families who may be looking for services within their communities will move into our district looking for a very um, specific service. We're 18% English language learners, so practically 50 different languages spoken throughout our district. And we serve about 8% of our students are homeless. <coughs> When we look at the need and supply and demand for early childhood, so you, you kind of see how dynamic and diverse the district we serve, but there's some great areas of opportunity and also great areas that I'd just like to take a moment to share. And really making the case for early childhood ed. And I kind of threw a bunch of graphs up here that it's a very busy slide, but you know, I thought it was important that we share these, these really interesting points. When you look at the Peabody assessment, which is an assessment that really looks at um, phonemic awareness, just phonics in the sense. The state's mandate, so what the state, the, excuse me, the federal government expects that 60, that 65% of your four-year-old children meet the proficiency benchmark. In our early childhood classes, K3 and K4 classrooms, 60, 68% of our three-year-olds met the four-year, four-year-old benchmark, and over 80% of our four-year-olds met that proficiency benchmark. When we looked at PALS, which is vocabulary awareness and recognition, the federal proficiency expectation for four-year-olds is 70%. 73% of our three-year-olds met the four-year-old benchmark. 83% of our four-year-olds met that federal benchmark. So when you look at the need and the investment in early childhood ed, we also looked at our kindergarten data. And core is where you want to be. It's kind of high proficiency in reading fluency and, and reading skills. Of the students, of the 270 students in our K-4 program, 75% were core. Of the 663 that had no K-3, K-4 experience, 43% were core. Strategic is in need of some movement, 11% in K-4 programs, 41% not in an early childhood program. For intensive or the lowest mark, 14% of our students who are in K-4 programs um, met that, were at that level, and 16% not in K-4 programs. Now here's what's interesting about the School District of Lancaster's early childhood program. We have limited slots. So we only take the neediest students in the district into those programs. So when you look at the success level, these aren't success levels of students who may be traditional early childhood students. These are success levels of the neediest students in our district. And when you look at the need or the opportunity for supply and demand, we serve around 400 students in our K-3 and K-4 program. Our waiting list this year exceeded 700. So why? 
So we kind of, we created a top 10 list for early childhood ed. So it's 10 of the many, um, and forgive me in translation, I love the many um, floating out there somewhere. So this is our top 10 list. I'm not going to go over all 10, but you can kind of see some of the great opportunities that kind of exist within that top 10 list. But one is, one of the many, um, is preschool is an opportunity for growth. Interesting concept, that as, as we look at how education has um, evolved, as we, as we look at how communities and this world has evolved, looking at growth starting as early as three years old, four years old, starting to anticipate student development or child development pretty much anymore from birth. We know that 85% of the foundation for communication, critical thinking, and problem-solving skills are already developed by the age of five. So 85% of our foundational skills are already in place by the time we hit five years old. Which kind of explains some of our behavior sometimes, I guess, right? So when you look at this slide, which is really interesting, so before the age of one, we, we, you know, we established vision development, speech from birth to three years old, emotional development from zero to two, math and logic from zero to about two and a half, social attainment and skills from zero to four, motor development from birth through about four and a half, five years old, peer and social skills, three years old and beyond, and of course, language cognition skills from around right after birth, from birth all the way to four years old. So when you look at specifically the need for early learning, and it was very interesting to hear Dr. Levine kind of share the you know, and I'm sure that that's evolving, but the reliance on, because I wish that we can work out our differences, kind of like those kids in the early childhood classes worked out their differences. And a great, one of the great tools I downloaded that, you know, we share, we had two students, um, or the case shows two students, and um, the young lady must have been making a domino um, line. You know, kind of, you remember that great game where you just lay on the ground and you, um, you know, you start to stack up dominoes. And of course, the male student walks, talked it out, and you just, you know, tell me what the problem was, what, you know, how you're feeling, and what you'd like me to do to solve it. Usually it's just the problem and how I'm gonna solve it. She never cares about what I'm feeling. But you know, you figure when you're thinking about social development, you're thinking about what we can learn at early, in early ages, if we start to develop before the age of five these cognitive skills, these life skills, how much better of an adult can we be when leading and developing in our world? Preschool, one of, you know, a third and fourth of the many. Preschool, preschool promote language and cognitive skills. Preschool activities boost pre-math and literacy skills. You know, one of the interesting um, opportunities we've had this week to just hear a little more about technology and infusing technology in education was a stark reminder. Technology is not about the, the, the tool itself. I mean, the beauty of technology and education it's not the fact that you can infuse a, a tablet or that you can buy more laptops or that you can put a whiteboard in place. The beauty of technology and education is the fact that you have access to information quickly. So the real question is, how do we teach students through, the, through their cognitive skills and building math and literacy skills to, to know what to do with that information? You know, interesting, it's not about the tablet. I mean, do we, if we give students access to, to the tablet, it, it's great. But what are they going to do with that tablet? So building literacy skills early on, building math skills early on, building language skills early on, showing students how to not only communicate with each other socially and emotionally, but how to communicate um, academically and instructionally is as important a factor as, as, as providing any tool available. What's the biggest number you can think of? A trillion, billion, zillion. That's pretty big. How about you? Ten. OK. How about you? Infinity. Can you top that? Infinity and one. Actually, we are looking for infinity plus infinity. Sorry. What about infinity times infinity? Oh. <laughs> I mean, right? So, so yeah, I, I love that slide. I mean, they're all great. That's the one that kind of stood out, that, that really resonates with me. 
first, I just love the little girl who says, oh, you got, you know, kind of like, you got served, as my son would say. Um, so, you know, so he thought he was smart until, you know, the young, you know, the young and kind of came forward and, and shared her perspective on it. You know, it, it's really interesting when you think of just in, in that scenario, how kids were thinking and whether it was pulled together or whether, you know, it was staged or, or just kind of let, you know, to, to pull together freely. We've all experienced that opportunity where either our children or some child has come up with a, solu a solution to a problem that we could have never imagined. So when we look at the, the power of education and especially early childhood education, it's really taking advantage of those teachable moments or learning moments. For us, this is especially important when we look at the need for early childhood ed, especially um, in, in our school district. You know, a couple interesting facts I wanted to take a moment to share. So children's, children need 1,000 hours of lap time prior to kindergarten to have a readiness skill in place to learn to read. So 1,000 hours of lap time, and lap time means seeing a student on your lap, child, your child on your lap, and, and reading to them and engaging in, in literacy moments. By the age of four, a child from a lower so socioeconomic family could have heard 32 million fewer words than a classmate from a professional family. So as we infuse these opportunities, as we look at this graph I shared here, you see where the, 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 the disparity starts to happen. At 16 months, this is cumulative vocabulary, the vocabulary of a child going into talked it out, and you just, you know, tell me what the problem was, what, you know, how you're feeling, and what you'd like me to do to solve it. Usually it's just the problem and how I'm gonna solve it. She never cares about what I'm feeling. But you know, you figure when you're thinking about social development, you're thinking about what we can learn at early, in early ages, if we start to develop before the age of five these cognitive skills, these life skills, how much better of an adult can we be when leading and developing in our world? Preschool, one of, you know, a third and fourth of the many. Preschool, preschool promote language and cognitive skills. Preschool activities boost pre-math and literacy skills. You know, one of the interesting um, opportunities we've had this week to just hear a little more about technology and infusing technology in education was a stark reminder. Technology is not about the, the, the tool itself. I mean, the beauty of technology in education is not the fact that you can infuse a, a tablet or that you can buy more laptops or that you can put a whiteboard in place the beauty of technology in education is the fact that you have access to information quickly. So the real question is, how do we teach students through, the, through their cognitive skills and building math and literacy skills to, to know what to do with that information? You know, interesting, it's not about the tablet. I mean, do we, if we give students access to, to the tablet, it, it's great. But what are they going to do with that tablet? So building literacy skills early on, building math skills early on, building language skills early on, showing students how to not only communicate with each other socially and emotionally, but how to communicate um, academically and instructionally is as important a factor as, pro as, as providing any tool available. Hey, what's the biggest number you can think of? A trillion, billion, zillion. That's pretty big. How about you? Ten. Okay. How about you? Infinity. Can you top that? Infinity in one. Actually, we are looking for infinity plus infinity. Sorry. What about infinity times infinity? Oh. <laughs> I mean, right? So, so yeah, I, I love that slide. I mean, they're all great. That's the one that kind of stood out that, that really resonates with me. First, I just love the little girl who says, oh, you got you know, kind of like, you got served, as my son would say. Um, so, you know, so he thought he was smart until, you know, the young, you know, the young and kind of came forward and, and shared her perspective on it. You know, it, it's really interesting when you think of just in, in that scenario, how kids were thinking and whether it was pulled together or whether, you know, it was staged or, or just kind of let, you know, to, to pull together freely. We've all experienced that opportunity where either our children or some child has come up with a, solu a solution to a problem that we could have never imagined. So when we look at the, the power of education and especially early childhood education, it's really 
taking advantage of those teachable moments or learning moments. For us, this is especially important when we look at the need for early childhood ed, especially um, in, in our school district. You know, a couple interesting facts I wanted to take a moment to share. So children's, children need 1,000 hours of lap time prior to kindergarten to have a readiness skill in place to learn to read. So 1,000 hours of lap time, and lap time means seeing a student on your lap, child, your child on your lap, and, and reading to them and engaging in, in literacy moments. By the age of four, a child from a lower so socioeconomic family could have heard 32 million fewer words than a classmate from a professional family. So as we infuse these opportunities, as we look at this graph I shared here, you see where the, 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 the disparity starts to happen. At 16 months, this is cumulative vocabulary, the vocabulary of a child going into talked it out, and you just you know, tell me what the problem was, what, you know, how you're feeling, and what you'd like me to do to solve it. Usually it's just the problem and how I'm going to solve it. She never cares about what I'm feeling. But you know, you figure when you're thinking about social development, you're thinking about what we can learn at early, in early ages, if we start to develop before the age of five these cognitive skills, these life skills, how much better of an adult can we be when leading and developing in our world? Preschool, one of, you know, a third and fourth of the many. Preschool, preschool promote language and cognitive skills. Preschool activities boost pre-math and literacy skills. You know, one of the interesting um, opportunities we've had this week to just hear a little more about technology and infusing technology in education was a stark reminder. Technology is not about the, the, the tool itself. I mean, the beauty of technology in education is not the fact that you can infuse a, a tablet or that you can buy more laptops or that you can put a whiteboard in place the beauty of technology and education is the fact that you have access to information quickly. So the real question is, how do we teach students through, the, through their cognitive skills and building math and literacy skills to, to know what to do with that information? You know, interesting, it's not about the tablet. I mean, do we, if we give students access to, to the tablet, it, it's great. But what are they going to do with that tablet? So building literacy skills early on, building math skills early on, building language skills early on, showing students how to not only communicate with each other socially and emotionally, but how to communicate um, academically and instructionally is as important a factor as, pro as, as providing any tool available. Hey, what's the biggest number you can think of? A trillion, billion, zillion. That's pretty big. How about you? Ten. OK. How about you? Infinity. Can you top that? Infinity and one. Actually, we are looking for infinity plus infinity. Sorry. What about infinity times infinity? Oh. <laughs> I mean, right? So, so I, I love that slide. I mean, they're all great. That's the one that kind of stood out that, that really resonates with me. First, I just love the little girl who says, oh, you got you know, kind of like, you got served, as my son would say. Um, so, you know, so he thought he was smart until, you know, the young, you know, the young and kind of came forward and, and shared her perspective on it. You know, it, it's really interesting when you think of just in, in that scenario, how kids were thinking and whether it was pulled together or whether, you know, it was staged or, or just kind of let, you know, to, to pull together freely. We've all experienced that opportunity where either our children or some child has come up with a, solu a solution to a problem that we could have never imagined. So when we look at the, the power of education, and especially early childhood education, it's really taking advantage of those teachable moments or learning moments. For us, this is especially important when we look at the need for early childhood ed, especially um, in, in our school district. You know, a couple interesting facts I wanted to take a moment to share. So children's, children need 1,000 hours of lap time prior to kindergarten, to have a readiness skill in place to learn to read. So 1,000 hours of lap time, and lap time means seeing a student on your lap, child, your child on your lap, and, and reading to them and engaging in, in literacy moments. By the age of four, 
a child from a lower so socioeconomic family could have heard 32 million fewer words than a classmate from a professional family. So as we infuse these opportunities, as we look at this graph I shared here, you see where the, 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 the disparity starts to happen. At 16 months, this is cumulative vocabulary, the vocabulary of a child going into talk it out, and you just, you know, tell me what the problem was, what, you know, how you're feeling, and what you'd like me to do to solve it. Usually it's just the problem and how I'm going to solve it. She never cares about what I'm feeling. But you know, you figure when you're thinking about social development, you're thinking about what we can learn at early, in early ages, if we start to develop before the age of five these cognitive skills, these life skills, how much better of an adult can we be when leading and developing in our world? Preschool, one of, you know, a third and fourth of the many. Preschool, preschool promote language and cognitive skills. Preschool activities boost pre-math and literacy skills. You know, one of the interesting um, opportunities we've had this week to just hear a little more about technology and infusing technology in education was a stark reminder. Technology is not about the, the, the tool itself. I mean, the beauty of technology in education is not the fact that you can infuse a, a tablet or that you can buy more laptops or that you can put a whiteboard in place. The beauty of technology and education is the fact that you have access to information quickly. So the real question is, how do we teach students through, the, through their cognitive skills and building math and literacy skills to, to know what to do with that information? You know, interesting, it's not about the tablet. I mean, do we, if we give students access to, to the tablet, it, it's great. But what are they going to do with that tablet? So building literacy skills early on, building math skills early on, building language skills early on, showing students how to not only communicate with each other, the African American students born or children born in the 1950s through their 40th birthday. And these are students who participated in early childhood programs and a group of students in, in control that did not, um, was, were not part of early childhood programs. And you see just across the board, arrest rates, um, income earning, high school graduation, basic achievement, homework achievement, IQ achievement. You see the disparity between the, this group, this controlled group of 123 um, individuals and just the difference of, of attainment and success for those who were in early childhood programs and those who were not. So a fifth and last, Preschool helps develop motor skills. You know, it's interesting, if you've ever sat in or have seen a, an early childhood a class or a preschool class, you may wonder to yourself, well, what are they doing? Um, they're either you know, playing Ring Around the Rosie or singing a song or playing in the you know, schoolyard or you know, playing hopscotch. And, and I don't know, I tell you, you know, I have to share with you, I have a, we have a three-year-old at home and she's just getting into hopscotch. And um, hopscotch feels a lot different now than it did when I was younger. You know, I tell you, you know, first when I bend down to pick up the rock for one of the numbers, it takes about 10 minutes to get back up. But, you know, it, no, not only that, but it's also her developing those motor skills and also the problem solving skills around how to engage um, in that activity. So sensory perceptual development, just the, the simple fact that within that structured environment, physical education, recess, developing the gross motor skills, an activity like finger painting, um, uh, Play-Doh, engaging in structures, an activity like making a, um, a noodle um, bracelet or necklace are all instructional opportunities. They all build around the cognitive need of students, of students um, as they move and become older. Am I good on time? I have a pretty deeper activity. So if you indulge me, I may go over a little bit, but I'm, I want a few, uh, can I get a few volunteers? You know, Sam, how about I pick you three guys? Come on up, guys. All right. So we're going to, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try something here. I have, a, I have a little exercise. Just because I pulled you up, I'm gonna, how about you guys have a seat here? I'm going the, the, to give the audience my back. Bear with me, please. You ready for this? But that's, that's easy. That's true. 
hit the color too. All right, so, so they each have an activity. Well, I'm gonna, don't start yet, guys. We're gonna see how well they do with preschool activities. We're gonna see how easy it actually is. So we have three stations. We have macaroni jewelry. So we're going to make some macaroni jewelry. We have the xylophone table. I, we won't do Mary Little Nan. We're going to give some options here. I'm going to be a little flexible. And then we have the Cheerios table. Now, they're actually Fruit Loops. Now, now, I have to tell you, I have Cheerios in the bag, but the Fruit Loops were especially special because my son's giving up sugar for Lent. And when he saw that I was taking a bit of the last few Fruit Loops, he almost tackled me walking out of the door this morning. So we're going to take just two minutes. We're going to see how well you can do in two minutes on your early childhood activities. Right, so we're going to explain that. When you want to do something that's new And it seems really, really hard to do You feel like quitting, you feel you're through Well, I have some advice for you Don't give up, keep on trying You're going to make it, I ain't lying Don't give up So what I what I so what I want to do so we're gonna have so we're going to test your skill here if you if you don't mind and I'm gonna get a, just a quick explanation of each. So would you mind playing that for for the audience? Sure. Okay. So this is a dialophone center. Interesting for, for early childhood ed, and especially for children, when you're looking at that being a simple activity, you see a child on a xylophone or any kind of instrument for that matter, understanding just the, the recognition of time, recognition of space, of sound, following directions, mastery of sound, because especially when it's a song, there, you know, you can see proficiency, you can establish proficiency very, very quickly. And so understanding that as a, as a learning tool and a teaching tool is very powerful. And, and you know, it's funny, you picked it up quickly because you started to get the momentum, that, that rhythm going, and, and that's what makes a difference. So let's go macaroni art. <laughs> so, so talk to them about macaroni. So what, what is it? What did you do? What's your inspiration? Way too small. <laughs> so let's give them a big round of applause for great macaroni. And that's because I cut the string way too short. But but looking but but looking or it could be macaroni bracelet, right? And or, right, or bigger or bigger yeah a bigger arm. So so when you look at this as an activity, again children um, coloring, decorating macaroni, establishing patterns, um, pulling together. The, the act that you're moving, they had dental floss, which is, I did that purposely because it makes it a little harder than the string. Uh, so the, fa the fact that you're running dental floss through the macaroni establishes your, your pincer muscles. And, and an interesting aspect of that is um, it's the same muscles you use when you're holding a pencil or a pen. It's the same muscle you, muscle you use when you're you know, now working on a keyboard. So it's really at the earlier ages starting to develop muscles that under normal circumstances you would normally not develop. And um, you know, working children through that activity as well. All right, my, my favorite, 
the same, the, the Fruit Loop, um, you know, center. So why don't you tell folks about your Fruit Loops? And we just had that. <laughs> do this. And I, I was thinking two things. One, I'm a minimalist, so I went just with purple, uh, surround, or surrounding purple with yellow. And I was also thinking about Pedro's son, and I could return all these fruit loops. <laughs> <laughs> My wife won't let me. And I actually th thought about doing a, uh, a necklace, and it turned out too small. It's got kind of a damn big one. So, so in addition to um, development of pincer muscles, um, the choosing the colors. I mean, understanding you know what your likes and, and dislikes are at an early age. Building a pattern. I mean, using the colors um, to establish patterns. Um, the fact that you may the child may decide to go three yellow, three green, three blue, and already starting to build early level mathematics skills. You know, one of the interesting concepts that we recently learned, two squares, and does anyone know why it's called two square, why a square is a square? Well, when you take those numbers as a manipulative, so we know two squared is two times two. However, if you took two times two Fruit Loops or boxes and you put them together, they would form a square. And if you took three times three and, and the like. So when you start to develop those early algebraic skills even as well, when you start to look at, you know, developing those concepts around math, um, you know, and literacy and, um, you know, muscle attainment and, and just building those skills across the board. It's how you start earlier on at, you know, birth, but definitely three years and beyond, and beyond to develop skills within children. So we had deep conversation today around the use of technology, instructional strategies, but most importantly is remembering all those tools mean nothing if we've not first worked um, to, develop, get, to develop our kids. So let's give them a big round of applause for being good, good students. And um, with that, I'd like to thank the Hourglass for inviting us to participate in this. I had a blast. <laughs>